Welcome back to Bixley Tech Tuesday. My name is Alexandra, and today we're continuing our series to review programming platforms. I'll leave our link to our playlist up above. Today, we're gonna to take a look at AppGyver, one of the most popular low-code, no-code platforms. We're gonna go over the pros and the cons, and we'll tell you what we think is the best use case. In the end, we'll give it a rating in seven key areas. So let's get started. Let's start off with the pros. Number one, the design tool inside AppGyver is great. It allows nearly pixel-perfect designs. Basically, anything your design team wants to implement can be rendered in AppGyver. So you can have a finished product that is visually stunning and professional looking. Number two, AppGyver has the backing of a large company, SAP, and so the platform is likely to mature quickly. It's also likely to have longevity with the support of a company that size. While it's always a little risky to outsource your project to a third-party platform, what happens if that platform shuts down, with AppGyver, it's safe to assume that risk is mitigated with the backing of SAP. Number three, API fetching and authentication is very capable for standard implementations. Most of what you're gonna wanna do as far as connecting with an API is gonna be functional within AppGyver. Number four, within AppGyver, you can dynamically set variables and values through custom formulas that are fairly easy to interact with. This is a huge upgrade over the lack of customization we saw on Bravo. Number five, it's pretty easy to get set up and get up to speed with the tool. They have short overview videos that make it easy to learn the new platform. If you're new to the tool, the amount of time it takes to learn won't counteract the acceleration you get from using a low-code, no-code platform in the first place. And of course, you'll only get more proficient from there. Number six, it's also very easy to interact with user data with built-in logic components. With other platforms, this isn't necessarily built in and it requires you either to write a custom API or make a workaround. Since here it's built in, you don't have to write the custom code and the built-in logic components make it easy to build more complex logic on top of the already existing user data structure. Number seven, there are active user forums with tips and assistance from the AppGyver team or other users. It's easy to find answers and ask your own questions. Let's move on to the cons. Number one, the AppGyver design tool is proprietary and it really doesn't translate to anything outside of the AppGyver ecosystem. Contrary to learning HTML, CSS, or other programming languages in which you can often translate skills to another area, this is not something that's really going to help you in your skill set beyond just using AppGyver. Number two, OAuth is broken and has been for a long time. This is a documented issue on the forums, and even though they say there will be a fix, there hasn't been one. Not a good sign. Number three, Although the forums are a great place to find answers, official documentation is lacking. The community does a good job of filling in the gaps, but we really want to see documentation up to a basic level on these types of platforms, and AppGyver just doesn't hit that mark. Number four, no custom components. Not at all. You have to use exactly what the platform provides and there's not a lot of room for workarounds. So before jumping into a project, it's important to be really familiar with what the platform is good at and what is completely unavailable. For some projects, this platform will simply be a non-starter. Number five, the built-in navigation components are not customizable. For instance, if you wanna include a back button on only some screen but not others, you can't do it. If you want to write your own static text to be in the header, the back button breaks. You can't add pictures or icons in the header. If you want to make a custom header to avoid all of this, it doesn't go all the way to the top of the screen and can be challenging to style. Number six, while you're able to install additional components, there is again a lack of documentation. There's no explanation of how to use them. So you either have to turn to the community for help or figure it out on your own. Number seven, certain styling tools are just broken and have been for a long time, kind of like OAuth, and this is a big problem. It's kind of a big flag that they're not fixing basic pieces of their platform. Number eight, reverting changes is easy. However, it shows just a history of commits with no explanation of what was saved or changed. It leaves you essentially guessing when it comes to reverting changes to a particular point in time in the app. Number nine, if you want to preview changes as you're working, you must save first, and this only complicates the aforementioned history log. It makes it even more challenging to revert changes or navigate through the history of the app. 
overall, this platform is useful if what you're building fits within the functionality that the platform has built in. If you have a straightforward app with some simple functionality, it is likely to be covered by the basics of AppGyver. However, if you have a unique idea, take a close look before getting started. You will likely find that some of what you want to accomplish, some key components of your app, will not be available. Once you learn the platform, there's definitely some acceleration. Again, if you're building things the platform has been designed to support. Styling is a little bit challenging, but you can get pretty darn close to pixel perfect. So this is a scenario of look before you leap. Let's move on to the scorecard. Under acceleration, we give this platform great. Documentation is weak. Ease of use is only okay. Reliability is okay. Customization is weak. Cost is okay, there's a plan for about $80 a month, and scalability is weak. That's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and don't forget to check us out online at Bixley.com. Until next time, this has been an episode of Bixley Tech Tuesday.